Right, so today we're looking at part 10 of Big Ed and Liz on 90 Day Fiancé Happily Ever After Season 7. So at the end of the last episode, Big Ed floated the idea of having a second engagement party, given the first one went down so badly. Additionally, given most of his family didn't come to the party, he wants to have this one in Arkansas, where most of them live, and where he grew up as a child. Well, since then, they've decided to go through with the idea. So now they're packing their items ahead of the 1,800 mile journey. It would be great to be able to share a part of me um, for Liz to see where I grew up and for us to learn more about each other. I actually think him showing her his hometown is a really sweet idea. There's not really any pressure on either of them, it's just a nice bonding opportunity. Mixing it in with the engagement party is a bit of a risky one because it could really sour the memories of this trip. But given how far away it is from their home in San Diego, maybe planning two trips is a bit much. And for now at least, they are in good spirit. Yeah, I have some great dessert for y'all after dinner. Okay, that sounded like a... <laughs> that sounded like a call girl. <laughs> They're a little bit cringe, but they really can be quite sweet together. I mentioned in the last video that it's quite nice for Liz for them not to be fighting at the moment, but it's quite a nice break for us too. Watching Ed can be infuriating and watching Liz can be so stressful. So it's good to be able to bring the heart rate down for a little bit, even if we know that the next fight is potentially just around the corner. I don't want to be left alone at the party. No, you You're won't. really good at wandering away from me. I would I be very upset if you do that to me. It's definitely fair for Liz to say that, and it's always a good idea with Ed to set expectations in advance, but it just reeks of foreshadowing, doesn't it? I mean, I know this isn't a novel where the author already knows the ending, but it's got the same feeling of inevitability about it. I wouldn't be surprised if Liz's stress levels were already rising too. She doesn't currently have any idea what kind of reception she's going to get from his family, and she doesn't even know if any of them like her or approve of the relationship. There could be already an opinion, so I think this is going to be a great test for us to see how Ed defends our relationship to his family. She says it's a test for them both, but it's just a test for him, isn't it? It's also depressing how she's taking the fact that his family are going to attack them as a given, and the only uncertainty is how Ed's going to respond. Well, I guess there's only one way to find out, so the two of them board their plane, and soon after, land in Bentonville, Arkansas. The plan for the first day is for Big Ed to show her the town and where he grew up, and so the conversation eventually leads on to what Ed was like when he was younger. I can picture Ed as a little kid. Uh, I was a lot more cuter. I couldn't imagine if we had a little mini you. That would be a handful. Interesting. They spoke about potentially having kids earlier on in the season, and they're speaking quite positively about it here. I wonder if it's something they've been thinking about more lately. Well, Ed goes on to reveal that he's actually one of six kids himself. He says he never really got told off when he was younger, despite being a bit of a troublemaker. And he says that overall, he had a pretty great childhood. I don't know your dad, but... Seemed like he provided well. He did, and I've forgiven my dad. Like, I'm, you know, I'm at peace with it. So apparently, the past resentment comes from the fact that Big Ed's dad got into a crowd where all he would do was party. He said that his mum decided that she just didn't want anything to do with that. So when Ed was a senior in high school, which would have made him around 17 or 18 years old, she divorced his father and moved to California. The day after graduation, I followed my mom out to, to California, but... I didn't like my dad after my parents' divorce. It's kind of interesting that although he didn't think his dad was a bad guy, he didn't like him because of how he behaved. And it's actually not too dissimilar from how he's behaving now himself. I wonder how he feels about the resentment that Tiffany feels towards him, and whether he feels like it's different, or if he feels like he might be following in the footsteps of his father. My dad passed away about 10 years ago, and it's kind of weird being here where we grew up, and... I'm not even talking to my mom right now. It must be quite tough bringing Liz there whilst he's having such deep issues with his mom. Almost every memory he'll have will relate back to her in some way. So I imagine it will be on both their minds a lot during this trip. In fact, the first place they visit is probably the place where Big Ed has the most memories of his mom. I'm standing in front of the house I grew up in with my fiance. It's, to me, it means a lot. I'm standing in my past with my future. 
For goodness sakes, those hot pink crocs. If young Ed could see him now, I wonder what he would say. Also, Disney are missing a trick by not hiring this man. Not to play the frog that all of the princesses kiss, but to write all of the cheesy cringe romance lines. Now that they're currently in a good space, he is absolutely pumping them out at the moment. Next up, the pair are off to his high school, which triggers even more reminiscing. Once I was in college, I met my ex-wife. Then I met Liz, my first serious relationship after my ex-wife. So for me to share my past with Liz, it's a pretty big deal. Liz is his first serious relationship since his ex-wife. What about Rose? How is that not a serious relationship? He went and lived with her in the Philippines for several weeks, met her family, and even bought a ring with the intention of proposing. I mean, I'm sure there are plenty of people who like to pretend like their exes don't exist, but you can't make a claim like that when your past relationship was well documented on the internet. After that slightly unusual comment, Liz then asks Ed what high school was like for him. I was teased and bullied because would call me no neck. Bully stopped when I realized I could make people laugh and I kind of just became class clown. I was gonna say kids can be ruthless, but judging by some of the comments I've seen targeting Ed, adults can definitely match them, especially with the anonymity of the internet. I'm just glad that in the comment sections of these videos at least, although there's always room for a light-hearted joke or two, the vast majority of the criticism is valid and it's aimed at his behavior. In response to this, Liz says that she never experienced bullying herself, but admitted that she didn't have a lot of friends growing up. In junior high, I did gymnastics, and then I ran track, which was very tiring, I'm kidding. It's easy to forget he wasn't always so globular. He was actually quite a handsome young man in good shape back in the day. Although, saying I ran track, which was very tiring, I'm just kidding, doesn't really back up his claim for having a great talent for making people laugh. Maybe he just lost his sense of humour the same way he lost his ability to run. And go, and you would just go. As fast as you can. I got some jumping. Okay, that's enough. The poor guy barely made it out of the starting blocks. I don't know, maybe he forgot to put his crocs in sport mode. Maybe if you put some red running trainers on him, he'll turn from Dr. Eggman to Sonic. Also, did anyone else spot the cameraman in the background? I think this is the first time I've ever caught a 90 Day Fiancé cameraman caught on camera. Your high school kiss, right here. <laughs> maybe I'll get some stinky pinky. <laughs> I don't know what that is, but I'm going to resist the urge to Google it. Because if I projectile vomit onto my laptop, I won't be able to edit and upload this video. So if you're watching this, it means I resisted the sick urge within me. I wish you the same strength. Thankfully, that was the end of that. So now, having explored his hometown, Big Ed and Liz are off to have dinner with Ed's sister, Christine, and her husband, Jack. He seems so very happy, which makes... Makes me happy. That's what I want for him. But it has to go both ways. Let's see how it goes. It's nice. She sounds like she's going into this quite open-minded. When Ed had his last big breakup with Liz, he spent a lot of time with Christine and Jack in Arkansas. Given he will no doubt have been spewing his usual vitriol in a bitter attempt to shift the entirety of the blame onto Liz, I'm glad Christine is giving Liz a chance to show who she is herself, rather than just believing what Ed said about her. The only thing that mom reiterates to me probably every time we talk is that she just worries about you. She wants you to be happy. She doesn't want you to get hurt. No. Oh, I'm glad to hear that Norma's wishing him well. I think she could have easily been harboring a lot of anger towards Ed. And given it's been over a year since the pair last spoke, it could have easily gone past the point of no return for her. So it is really nice to hear that the relationship is reparable from her end. Ed and Liz got engaged and mom had reservations just because of the multiple breakups and still does. Whatever you think of how Norma is handling the situation, you can't deny that her reservations are well-founded. It's so funny, Ed is so prone to misreading situations, making mistakes, and acting on impulse. But his whole family seemed to be so much more level-headed. His brother gave him some really good advice on that golf course when he started dating Liz. And his sister is handling this situation really maturely too. It's almost like all of the negative genetic personality traits got concentrated into Ed. I've tried to reassure her, Mom, that you're 50-something yeah. years old and, and you found someone you really care about and it's yeah. a risk you're willing to take. It must be such a relief for Ed to hear that she's kind of got his back here. Not so much in an I think you're making the right decision kind of way, but in like a you're old enough to make your own decisions and your own mistakes, so I respect your right to do what you think is best kind of way. It must be such a relief for Liz to hear this too. She could have easily expected a grilling from Christine here, but it sounds like she's just willing to see where it goes and that she genuinely hopes that it works out between the two of them. So my hope and prayer is that she will at some point 
give you guys a chance to get together and, and talk and meet and really get to know Liz. The seasons fly by and they obviously don't record and show a lot of the normal socialising. So it's hard to tell if she just doesn't like Liz having spent a lot of time with her. Or if she just doesn't approve of the relationship because of what she's heard about it. Like the fact that they've broken up a lot and not had an easy ride. And the fact that Tiffany doesn't like Liz. So Liz, do you have any, do you have concerns? Yes. Nervous. Meeting everybody. She's very reserved. Okay, all of those are very valid concerns, but what the hell was Big Head talking about by saying she's very reserved? When has she ever been reserved? If there's a problem, Liz will not hesitate kicking off, especially if there's alcohol involved. I mean, it's not like she's just gonna sit there and take it if bombs start flying during the party. Maybe he misspoke and meant to say that she has reservations. Everyone's loud, but looking forward to getting to know you and meet you and visit with you and- No pressure. But honestly, Liz, it is gonna be a lot. Kind of mixed signals saying on the one hand everyone's looking forward to meeting her and getting to know her, whilst on the other hand saying that everyone's loud and it's gonna be a lot. She's basically saying that they're gonna give her a chance, but that they're also gonna put her on the spot a bit. And I don't know if the knowing what to expect is gonna put her mind to rest or stress her out even more. If they don't agree, I think it'll be very hard for Ed to settle down or move forward with marriage because his family is so important to him. To be fair, he has already chosen Liz over his mum and daughter, so I'm not sure if you siblings and cousins dissenting is going to tip the decision in their favour. But I guess you never know with Ed. Although with the engagement party tomorrow, I guess we'll soon find out. So if you want to see how the whole thing goes down, make sure you're subscribed down below so you don't miss it. Thank you for watching and hopefully I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.